This video is a continuation of the last video where we um, were discussing how to graph the function of cotangent. So we're going to start this, um, this example off by finding the values of a, b, c, and d. And if you can remember, a is the number that's in front of our cotangent, which it, it's missing, it just is a negative, so our value for a is going to be negative 1. B is the number that's in front of our x, and that is missing as well, and we know that the default value is 1. C is our vertical shift, so that negative 2 means that we're moving our graph down by 2. It's not going to be at the x-axis. And then D is always being subtracted from our x term, so D is pi over 4. So the very first thing I'm going to look at is finding my period. So my period is pi over b, which is 1, so it's just pi. So we haven't actually changed our period for this equation. Our vertical shift, we said, is down by 2, right? We can say down 2 or negative 2. Our phase shift or horizontal shift is going to be to the right by pi over 4, and then um, our uh, uh, cotangent does not have amplitude, all right? So we're not going to say that it is a amplitude. We are going to say that we have either a stretch or compress factor. All right, so if a is negative 1, the absolute value of a is 1. 1 doesn't change the value of my graph, so there is no stretch or compress factor here. But the important part is the negative part. That negative, we found when we had, you know, functions like f of x equals negative x squared, what did that negative do? It reflected our graph over the x-axis. So we're going to have a reflection over the x-axis. Okay, and that is true whether we're graphing sine, cosine, tangent, cotangent, whatever function we're graphing. If that a is negative, it is a reflection over the x-axis. All right, so let's start off by finding the beginning of our period. And if you remember, we set whatever is inside, whatever we're taking the cotangent of, x minus pi over 4 to 0, and then we solve for x, x equals pi over 4. The end of our period, we're going to set x minus pi over 4 to pi, and when we solve, we get x equals 5 pi over 4. So this is convenient. There are four equal parts here, right? If we jump from pi over 4 to 2 pi over 4, 3 pi over 4, 4 pi over 4, 5 pi over 4. That's four jumps. All right, so I'm just going to, each one of these increments here is going to have a width of pi over 4 because that makes it easy. So this is going to be pi over 4. And when I find 5 pi over 4, 2, 3, 4, 5 pi over 4. And if you remember, these are our asymptotes. So let's go ahead and draw our asymptotes in, and the equation of this one is x equals pi over 4, and the equation of this one is x equals 5 pi over 4. Okay, so this is the beginning of our first period. So let's label these, and when I label these, I have 1 pi over 4, 2 pi over 4 is pi over 2, 3 pi over 4 doesn't reduce, 4 pi over 4 is just pi. So let's do some calculations and we're going to find the value of this graph. So let's do at pi over 2, we get negative 2 minus the cotangent of pi over 2 minus pi over 4. Well, this value right here is just pi over 4. So, and I know the cotangent of pi over 4 is 1. So I end up with 2, negative 2 minus 1 is negative 3. So I'll come down here and put a, a mark at negative 3. So if I have 3 pi over 4, when I plug that in, 
I get 3 pi over 4 minus pi over 4. Okay, so I know this is going to be pi over 2, and I know the cotangent at pi over 2 is 0. So negative 2 minus 0 is, oops, what am I doing? Negative 2 minus 0 is negative 2. And then I have pi, so let's do our pi. I have negative 2 minus the cotangent of pi minus pi over 4. That is going to be 3 pi over 4. And cotangent in the second quadrant of 3 pi over 4 is going to be negative 1. So I get this. So negative 2 plus 1 is, is negative 1. And then I'm going to go ahead and draw my graph in. So it's going to look like this. Awesome. All right, so one of the things I didn't do was I didn't draw in my vertical shift. y equals negative 2. All right, so now I need to go find another period. So I counted 1, 2, 3, four of these going forward so i'm going to count four going back one two three four and this is where my asymptote is going to be i just need to figure out the label now all right so when i figure out the label i know each of these widths is pi over four so when i label this is going to be negative pi over four negative 2 pi over 4, which is negative pi over 2. And this is going to be negative 3 pi over 4. And so I have 1, 2, 3, 4 equal parts here, and this obviously is 0. So I'm just going to go ahead and mimic, um, let's write the equation of this, x equals negative 3 pi over 4. And I'm going to just go ahead and mimic my points. This first point is going to be down at negative 3. The second point is going to be on my dashed line. And the third point is going to be at, at negative 1. So I'm going to draw my graph in. And my graph looks the same. All right, so now let's go ahead and do the second example. It's going to be a little bit more difficult. Um, I want you to take a look at this. I have not factored b out, so I need to rewrite this equation with a new b value, right, with my b value factored out. So this is 1 plus 1 half cotangent of, when I factor that 2 out, I get 3 pi over 4. Okay, so now it's easy to find a, b, c, and d. c and d. A is the number in front of cotangent, so that is 1 half. B is the number that's in front of my x, so that's going to be 2. C is my vertical shift, so that's a positive 1. And D is being subtracted from x, so that's 3 pi over 4. That's my phase shift. So let's calculate our period. So our period is going to be pi over b, which is 2. My, let's see, my period, my vertical shift is going to be 1, meaning that it's no longer going to be have a nice resting um, position at the x-axis. It's going to be above by 1. I have a phase shift of 3 pi over 4. So if you take a look at the original graph we drew of cosine, this graph will be moved 3 pi over 4 to the right. And then while I don't necessarily have ampl amplitude, I am compressing my, my graph by 1 half. So I have a compress by 1 half. All right, so let's go ahead and find the beginning and the end of this graph. So the beginning. I'm going to take what's inside. I like to work with this one. I'm going to take what's inside the parentheses, right? Everything that I'm taking the cotangent of, set it to 0. So now I get 2x equals 3 pi over 2. And when I divide by 2, I get 3 pi over 4. 
which looks really good because that is my my um, phase shift. My end is gonna do the same thing except we're setting it equal to pi instead. So when I add three pi, so two pi over two plus three pi over two is five pi over two and divide, I get five pi over four. So let's see, so I could count off, I could do one pi, two pi, three pi, four pi, five pi, and I would have enough space. If I made them smaller and counted off by pi over eight instead, one pi over eight, two pi over eight, three pi over eight, four pi over eight, five pi over eight, six pi over eight, I'm not gonna have enough space to fit it in. So I'm gonna have to count by pi over four even though I don't necessarily want to. So this is gonna be pi over four, um, 2 pi over 4 is pi over 2, 3 pi over 4, 4 pi over 4 is pi, 5 pi over 4. So my asymptotes are going to be at 3 pi over 4 and 5 pi over 4. And I'm going to have to divide these into um, 4 equal parts which means I'm gonna to have to add some labels. I need a label here and a label here. So this is three pi over four and four pi over four. So if I add them, I get seven pi over four. And if I divide by two, I get seven pi over eight. Seven pi over eight, seven pi over eight. That's four pi over four and five pi over four. That's nine pi over four divided by two is nine pi over eight. Okay, good. So now let's go ahead and calculate those values. I have one plus a half, and I'm gonna plug in um, seven pi over eight, seven pi over eight um, of the cotangent of, and you can plug this in or keep it the way this is, two times seven pi over eight minus three pi over two. All right, so I have seven pi over four minus six pi over four is pi over four. So this is just gonna evaluate out to pi over four. Cotangent at pi over four is one. So I end up with one plus one half is three halves. So when I graph that point, I get three halves. When I plug in a pi, I get one plus one half times the cotangent of two times pi minus three pi over two. So two pi minus three pi over two is just pi over two. So I know the cotangent is zero there, so I just get one. And when I do nine pi over eight, nine pi over eight, I get one plus one half cotangent of two times nine pi over eight minus three pi over two. So that's gonna be nine pi over four minus six pi over four is three pi over four. So this is just three pi over four. So the cotangent of three pi over four is negative one. So it's one minus a half. So I get a half. And you can see that my graph is going to look like this when I draw it in. So now let's go back to and draw a nice, my nice asymptotes in and do another period if we have enough time. This is x equals 5 pi over 4. This is x equals 3 pi over 4 and this is x equals pi over four. My middle marks here will be um, pi over four and two pi over, that's gonna be three pi over eight, and this is gonna be five pi over eight, and I'm just gonna duplicate my marks here. I get one here, one here, and one here. And when I draw it in, I get this nice curve. It's a beautiful, nice curve. Okay, and I forgot to do my vertical shift of one. This is a line y equals one. And that's my last example for cotangent.